This looks like a lizard. For a long time, people thought it was, but it's very different. A lot of creatures on this earth get the title living fossil. It's a bit of a cliche, but in the case of this creature, it really is deserved because virtually unchanged from this form, it's been around on this earth for 140 million years. It's seen the dinosaurs come and go. It's New Zealand's Tuatara. It's not a lizard. In fact, it's got a number of differences, and one of them you can see up here is the beak-like mouth. You may have seen pictures of mouths like that on extinct reptiles. And fortunately, the other clues are hidden by its skin. There are differences in the skull, and there are differences in the ribs. And of course, there's that third eye, which sits up here between the two real ones. Now, it's covered by skin, and it can't see images, but it has the structure of a real eye. It's got a lens at the front. It's got a retina for receiving images, and nerves that run to the brain. What can it do if it can't see images? Well, no one's really sure, but it seems that it has a role in picking up light and sending messages about the increasing and decreasing day length to the brain so the tuatara's behaviour can change in conformity with the seasons. Well, how does it fit in with the other reptiles, particularly the extinct dinosaurs? Here are the reptiles at your fingertips. About 225 million years ago, the first reptiles evolved, and for a while there was an age of reptiles, up to about 65 million years ago. It was the age of dinosaurs, all of them extinct today. But four lines of reptiles have persisted to modern times. There are the tortoises and turtles. There are more than 200 kinds of those. Over here, the crocodiles and the alligators are the closest reptiles to the dinosaurs. There are more than 20 kinds of those. Snakes and lizards are fairly recent in the scheme of things, and they're very plentiful. There are more than four and a half thousand of those. But of the fourth line, there's one survivor only, and that is the tuatara. Today, tuataras are confined to New Zealand's offshore islands, or a few of them, except, of course, for those kept in captivity, like this one, which is found at the Otorohonga Kiwi House. On the islands, they can dig burrows of their own, but they often share them with seabirds, which have done the digging. They grow very slowly. This one's only a juvenile. They don't reach sexual maturity until they're quite old, and they may live as long as a hundred years. But on those islands, they scuttle around eating anything they come across with those peculiar jaws. That means insects, the young of the seabirds whose burrows they share, and very often wetters, which are themselves very primitive cricket-like insects. And as long as no one disturbs those islands, leaves them alone, they'll be surviving for a long time yet. Curiosity.